What if I told you I suck at dunking and I wasn't just fishing for compliments? I do understand I'm a pretty capable and unique dunker, so maybe suck isn't the right word, but believe me when I say, there's levels to this. Question is, what separates the good from the great? I asked the best in the game for their thoughts, and they'll get back to me. In the meantime, here are some of my thoughts. I've gone between the legs off vert, behind the back off vert, and whatever the hell this thing is off vert. But when I think pro dunker, I think dunk contests. Going up against multiple opponents, hyping up the crowd, performing under pressure, and reaching into my bag to impress the judges. But am I contest ready? Oh, cool. Let's see what Jay Clark thinks. The biggest criteria in terms of being contest ready is your ability to repeat dunks. Let's say you can do a 360 East Bay, but you're going to make it one out of 10. That's not going to be the most ideal dunk for a contest. But I think if you can make it back to back, or can make it three out of five times something in that range where you're consistent with the dunk you're confident with it that's going to be one of the biggest factors in being contest ready look when it comes to dunking i can be confident and i'm not trying to contradict myself but given 10 attempts let alone the three attempts i'd have in a contest i'm not sure i would be able to hit those dunks even once but that's only for this current moment because luckily this can be improved with time and practice there's almost an infinite amount of progress that one can make but excelling as a pro dunker is made harder by the fact that by and large, they don't have. Hello? Ah, uh, Jay Clark. It's, I feel that just because you're a pro dunker doesn't mean that dunking is your career. Most pro dunkers don't make enough money to live. It's, for the most part, a side hustle. I think one of the big challenges in that is just being able to supplement all the things that you need to perform well and be able to continue to dunk and train at a high level all the while not getting paid for the work that you do compared to other professional athletes. Yes, the majority of pro dunkers do not dunk as a full-time job. They have to supplement their income and might not have access to the same quality of recovery and therapeutic solutions as other pro athletes. It makes sense that the best athletes in their sport are highly determined, disciplined, and focused, and the professional dunker is is no exception. And I do hold some of these qualities myself, but outside of working hard and training smart, I can't help but feel that there's a little luck involved. Social media, unfortunately, I would say it plays a big part in dunking, specifically in my dunking career. As my following grew, I found that it afforded me some access to different levels of competition and different opportunities. Social media definitely isn't all luck, but it really can make or break your career. I've seen talented dunkers sit at home and I've seen guys that aren't as talented but do have bigger followings get those opportunities that maybe the more talented guy has gotten. Basically, if you can't play the social media game, you might have to sit your ass at home. And social media can really be a double-edged sword. A couple weeks ago, I used TikTok for 22 hours, and not one of those hours was used to post. Now that's bad, but it's actually not as bad as you if you haven't liked the video yet. You really should know better. In terms of notoriety, it's been a good thing. It's been awesome to have that type of global impact. But at the same time, it creates this unnecessary pressure. I enjoy dunking and I don't care so much about content creation. But in order to be the best dunker that I can be, content creation is a necessity. Wow, so to make this social media thing work, you have to put time and energy into curating videos and creating an online persona for yourself. Also that you can be better recognized, invited to events, and be targeted for partnerships. Damn, I mean, isn't that kind of stressful? Sometimes that can be stressful. That's, that's what I'm saying. Okay, so let's say I have my social media together. I got my contest ready dunks. And... I have the necessary resources to continue pursuing dunking as for what is currently a side hustle. Maybe I'm not doing so bad after all, but what really makes a pro a pro? If company X pays you $200 to do a show, that puts you in the category as a professional dunker. That's fair. And the long answer? For me, what I think makes a pro is more of a mindset of how you approach dunking and how you conduct and carry yourself at shows and contests and stuff like that. A lot of guys can get invited to contests because of their amazing jumping ability, but the guys that stick around and make those connections and are able to stand the test of time are the ones that are taking care of their body, understand following the dunk trends and being able to emulate and adapt to that to further their dunking career. I think that's what 
what separates the pros from guys that technically are professionals because they got paid. Now, all of this seriously isn't to put myself down or discourage anybody from becoming a pro dunker. My goal is actually quite the opposite. Great things in life really do come from hard work and perseverance, and dunking is one of the hardest things I've ever done. If you're up for the challenge, it's here for you. Hopefully this video has opened some eyes to the impressive ability and resolve of the pros and what it really takes to make them stand out. Now, if you're serious about getting to that level, here's a playlist of videos that might help you get there.